What's up guys, we're back in the uh, shed today and I want to show you a really cool product from DIY Holster. This is their um, new vacuum form shell. This is for the Glock 26. They make them uh, for all the Glock, maybe not all the Glock models, but the, uh, the basically the 9 and the 9 and 40 cal Glocks. They make them in right-handed and I believe they uh, have just come out with a left-handed model. Uh, they also make them for a Smith & Wesson shield. This is a right-handed model for the shield. This is what it looks like when it's put together. And the cool thing about these shells is that they come just like this in the bag uh, for less than ten dollars. Uh, you get the shell and this clip. This is, this is a uh, one and three quarter inch belt clip. It's designed to mount these two holes right here and uh, go over. Let me just show you. Designed to be run like this, um, mounted right here and going over. You can slide this in your pants and this goes over and hooks onto the belt. I just wanted to show you uh, some of the features of this and why it's so why it's so cool and why it's kind of a game changer in the uh, DIY holster, you know, Kydex industry. This is so you can see it comes pre-molded. They've blocked out for the uh, slide release on the side right here. They've got a channel already molded in. They've also got it cut for like an RMR or a uh, red dot sight. It's hard to tell right here, but when you look at it on the gun, you can tell it's kind of flared and brought down right there. So if you mounted a uh, red dot right here, it would work. And it's got the two mounting holes right here. When you fold it together, these will have the uh, rivets will go through these and uh, rivet together and pinch right there. You've also got this slot right here. So if you wanted to mount like an ulti clip on the front right there, you can mount it like that and this will clip onto the belt or the pants. Um, these two mounting holes right here you can also mount like a strut. This is a, um, a Raven strut with a soft loop. If you had the proper spacers right here you can mount that right there to those two holes. And you can also uh, mount one of the Raven wings to these two holes down at the bottom. Uh, this is a Raven. This um, I think might have come from Index Fastener. It's their version of the, the wing. It comes with two little, uh, I guess, spacers right here, uh, two different heights, so you can adjust how much it pulls. This one's trimmed down for the shield because of the way my knuckle comes in and grabs, I had to clear it a little bit. But um, it just shows you some of the versatility of this holster when you get it put together. Uh, it's got a bunch of different ways to mount uh, belt, belt loops, belt clips, um, the wing you know any kind of way you want to do it if you want to tuck it you can mount down here if you don't you can mount it up here and even these you can see have a little bit of adjustment um, for cant if you have the belt loop right here you know it gives you some room for adjustment this right here is almost infinitely adjustable because it's just one big slot and it's really uh, pretty easy to make uh, if you don't have to do any grinding on it it's maybe 10 minutes just heating it up and setting the rivets. Um, but what I like to do, me personally, I like to trim the uh, magazine. See where it's covered the uh, mag release on this side? That kind of gets in the way of my knuckle right here. So I like to trim that off. I like to take a little bit off right here on the inside. You can kind of see right there how I've taken a little bit of that off. And I also like to cut down I like to cut down the top right here just to give my thumb a little bit of room because when you have it laid right there you can see it's a little bit high right here when you come in your thumb really hits that right there they might have left it um you know a little slack on it so you can trim it down you know you can always take some off you can't really add any back and a little bit right here if you've undercut your trigger guard right here you're going to need to uh, take some of that material out right there which i do that on both sides because I undercut my trigger guard just a little bit. But other than that, uh, a little bit of trimming, and a little bit of polishing on the edge, put a little heat in the middle right here and fold it around the gun and uh, put two rivets in there and hold it. Don't set them yet. Just put two rivets and clamp it and then wait for it to cool off and then you can set the rivets and uh, you're good to go. The only thing you need after that, you just need some uh, screws and some mounting hardware and you're good to go. Uh, maybe 10 15 minutes that's with grinding sanding heating and folding so um, 
kind of take you through that process and show you just how easy it is. I'm not going to use any uh, real fancy tool. I'm just going to use a uh, heat gun and a Dremel. And this is really the only special tool you need. This is the rivet uh, setter or the die and punch for the rivet. If you're already into uh, Kydex holster making, you probably already have one of these. It, uh, it definitely beats, um, you know, taping your gun, having to put, you know, make channels for all these little buttons and um, ejection ports and all that, having to tape it with blue tape and build and all that stuff, and then heating, uh, pressing, wait for it to cool off, grinding, making sure you got it lined up right. It really takes a whole lot of time out of it, especially for the uh, the garage DIY guys, the smaller guys that don't have CNC routers and machines and stuff like that. Uh, if you just want to make some for yourself, for your buddies, this is great because you don't really have to invest a whole lot. Um, I imagine if you wanted to, you know, start your own your own little side job business with it, you could because, uh, like I said, it's offered for Glocks and MP Shields, so. Those are two of the most popular guns out there right now, so you can pretty probably get a, a pretty good client base with just those two models right there. But anyway, let's uh, shift the camera and I'll show you how to get one of these made up. All right, as you can see, I've got um, I've got the shell in here with this super high-tech uh, shop towel covering up the part that I don't want to heat up. So you can see this is the part you want to heat up this little channel right here, the sight channel, where it's going to fold. So just take the towel and cover up the part you don't want to heat up put your gloves on because it's going to get hot we got the heat gun i'm just going to use it on this first uh setting the low setting and uh, it'll just take a few minutes to heat it up and, uh, so here we go I'm using the pencil just to kind of push it to see when it gets soft you can use anything your finger if you got a glove on. You can almost see it kind of bend and get soft right there. You can kind of tell. You can see it flexing maybe. All right. Should kind of work quick here. Sure the gun's pushed all the way in to the trigger guard put your two rivets in to line up the holes and then take just something like that to clamp it make sure the gun's pushed all the way in and hold pressure here and give it a little bit of pressure there so you can see how it's uh, molded right there and it doesn't take long at all for this thing to cool off let's see get the glove off Probably, yeah, it's already getting cool right now. There we go. I mean, that was probably less than a minute with a heat gun and low setting just to warm that channel up enough to get it to fold. And you just wrap it around the gun. Set your two rivets in just to line up the holes and then clamp it and hold it until it cools off. And, uh, you know, you'll feel it start to harden back up right here. And that's when you know it's, it's cooled off enough. So the next thing we got to do is uh, take some of this material off. I probably should have done that before I molded it. But, um, you know, if this is your first time using one of these, you might not know. You know, you might not have an idea of where to cut out. But since I've already made one, I already had an idea. So I could have trimmed it before I folded it. But in any case, it's not hard to do once it's folded. So um, I'll get the Dremel out and take some of this stuff off and uh, I'll come back when I get that done. All right, so we've got the, uh, the grinding and sanding done from the Dremel. You can see I took that little bit off right there and a little bit by the trigger guard on both sides. I kind of uh, took some height off the sweat guard and I took a little bit right here and kind of made that straight all the way down. Then other than that, I just kind of rounded the edges with the Dremel to make sanding a little bit easier. Um, so all we got left is to set the rivets and polish the edge and we're good to go and put some mounting hardware on there. Alright, so you can see I've got it finished. Uh, I've got the edge polished. I just polished that with my hoodie. Um, you know, just rub it across there really fast until it started to shine. So you don't need 
uh, really fancy tools to get a decent polish. Um, maybe if you wanted to polish it quicker, you would need fancier tools, but uh, just do one. Just take a rag or t-shirt, rub across the edge, and it'll make it shine a little bit. We got this uh, Raven strut and soft loop on there right now. You can see the retention. Got a nice little click. And not going anywhere. That's in there just as much as it needs to be. When you pull it, it comes right on out. There you go. Um, just a couple of things about this. It doesn't have adjustable retention. It's just the nature of the beast when you've got a short um, gun like this that you can put a strut on. There's not really a place to put retention unless you maybe put it here, but then that would get in the way of a wing. Um, but the way they have it molded right now, you can see right here, it's, that's where the retention comes from. It's like that on both sides. It's got decent retention as it is. Um, if you want to have a lot more and you're very careful and you know what you're doing, you can put a little heat right here and push it and uh, get it to grip a little tighter. But be careful because you can mess up all of this right here uh, with too much heat and then the whole holster, the entire holster will be pretty much ruined. Um, so just be careful if you want to go that route. Um, another thing, this channel right here for the um, slide release. I know they made it big for the extended uh, slide releases that some of the Glocks have, but it's almost kind of too big. You see right there how far it sticks out, and especially you can kind of see that corner right there. The thing kind of digs into your stomach a little bit um, when you're carrying an appendix, and I've even cut that down a pretty good bit and give it a little flatter angle, uh, mainly to get the thumb in. So when you go down to, to grip, you know, you're not hitting your thumb. But uh, that little bit right there, a, a little bit of a hot spot. So maybe if they could just make it a little flatter or, you know, not so far back, um, that'd be a little better, a little more comfortable, especially for the 26. I don't know a lot of people that put extended releases on 26s. I mean, maybe they do, but, uh, you know, maybe just something for them to think about. Other than that, it's pretty, pretty great. Uh, I don't really have any other complaints about it. Like I said, they probably added a little extra material here just so you could, you know, grind down to however far you wanted it. If they cut it a little too short and somebody wanted more, you know, that might be a problem. But like I said, you can always take more material away. It's kind of hard to add it back after it's, uh, after it's been cut off. And you also don't have to worry about the ejection port because um, the blank that they used to mold these, I'm guessing, was just smooth. So you don't have to worry about that. And there's a little bit you can see right there. That's probably for your uh, loaded round indicator. This gun's not loaded right now, so it's kind of flat. But you can see where it would go in right there if it was stuck up. So they give you a little bit of room for that so it won't rub. But uh, yeah, this is a pretty good deal. $10. You don't get this for $10. You get the clip right here. But since I already have one on that holster, I'm not going to put this one on here. This will be a, just a different one in case I want to tuck my shirt in or something like that. I might even put the ulti clip on there to use with uh, gym shorts, sweatpants, stuff like that. So yeah, but for $10, this is a great deal. $10 in a little bit of time. And you've got a really good, well-made, nicely molded holster with a lot of mounting options. All right, so there you go. There's the, uh, the holster shell for the 26. Like I said, they make them for the shield. I'm pretty sure they make them right and left-handed. Um, I'm not really going to show any, you know, drawing from it or how it fits in my pants because uh, I don't want you guys looking at my pants, especially the appendix area. And everybody's body is different, so how it fits me might not necessarily mean it would fit you the same way. So, um, you know, it is what it is. Like I said, you can put a wing on here, you can put a raven wing, or you can put one of the index fastener wings on there to give it a little bit of pull on the handle. Um, yeah, and it's pretty much, I wouldn't say infinitely configurable, but it has a lot of different configurations. You can run it pretty much however you want. So, um, you know, so anyway, this is a great option for a DIY holster. Um, if, you, if you want one, go to DIY Holster and uh, order one and check it out.
Thanks for watching. You guys know the drill. If you like the video and you want to see more in the future, click right here. If you want to see another video right now, click right here. Thanks for watching. So at 10 yards, let's try it with a 5.96 pistol. With a uh, DCM.